Welcome to the first ever video broadcast of Lever Analytics. I am your host, Lever KT, and y'all already know how we get down. This episode is going to be on the Carolina Panthers. Every once in a while, I do a video uh, podcast. I don't know how often I'll end up doing a video podcast, but once in a while, you know, it'll, it'll be a treat. Um, a lot of y'all don't know, well, some of y'all know, that these podcasts are go out to whatever streaming platforms that they on like you know apple Podcasts, uh spotify uh, google Podcasts, amazon music uh tune in it's on so many different uh podcast platforms but i also upload them to youtube just because youtube is like the biggest platform that there is so i feel like it's pivotal to upload them to youtube and i've been getting a lot of love on youtube but i want to give all of the youtube followers um, kind of a treat just because it's always audio they still show love regardless so it's time to do one video so on this episode we're going to talk about the Carolina Panthers offseason playbook the Carolina Panthers are a very interesting team um, that team has a special place in my heart because our head coach comes from the Carolina Panthers our GM Brandon Beam and I'm a Buffalo Bills fan for those of y'all who don't know come from the Carolina Panthers and we seem to have this relationship you know Kelvin Benjamin when he got traded you know he got traded to the Buffalo Bills so a lot of former Panthers players end up being Bills it's just the way it goes uh, with Carolina and the Buffalo Bills so let's get into it like we always do we're going to talk about the Carolina Panthers top five play pay uh players pretty much on the cap this season uh for the upcoming 2021 season so we got teddy bridgewater he's getting 22.9 million on the cap he was like wow 22.9 million that's a lot of money you know for the production but it's really not that bad when you look at how well quarterbacks are getting paid for instance also in the nfc south uh matt ryan is scheduled to make 41 million this year so <laughs> Be glad. Take that $22.9 million. I know on some mock drafts, some mock drafts have the Carolina Panthers taking a quarterback. Uh, but don't. Teddy Bridgewater just isn't done quite yet. So I think uh, Carolina fans, he, he's not as bad as you may think he is. He had a PFF grade of 66. Not that great. 15 touchdowns, 11 interceptions. But let's put things into pers perspective. Christian McCaffrey didn't play often this season. And while... Mike Davis did do a, a great job in replacing Christian McCaffrey uh, for the games that he didn't play. Christian McCaffrey helps a quarterback out so much uh, with catching a rock out of the backfield. He's a matchup nightmare. So it, it'll be nice to see uh, what Teddy Bridgewater can do with the full season of Christian McCaffrey. Uh, coming up as the number two top play Carolina Panthers, we got Kwan Short. He's getting $20.8 million a year. He had a PFF grade of 45.4. It's not... Really fair because he had a torn rotator cuff in week two of the season. So you're really looking at a game and a half of 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 play to to get that 45.4 uh, uh, PFF grade. Uh, number three, so they they got some decision decisions to make at 20.8 million. Do they really want to keep that salary on the cap this year? You know, maybe they can restructure that contract, but that's a lot of money. Going to a player that barely paid last year. Coming up with the number three uh, highest paid Carolina Panther, we got Shaq Thompson. He's getting $14.1 million. He has a PFF grade of nine, uh, 49.8. He had, had 120 total tackles this year, I believe, 90 uh, solo and 20 assisted. That's not bad at all. He also had two forced fumbles. Uh, coming up at the fourth highest paid Carolina Panther is Christian McCaffrey. It's like running backs is a dying breed in the NFL, but I feel like they got Christian McCaffrey for uh, contract was really solid uh, for him anyway, <laughs> uh, for the organization as well. Uh, so his PFF grade was 75.5, and now he was injured for a lot of the season, so that's a pretty damn good uh, PFF grade considering that he didn't play much this year. And his cap number is $12.5 million. Uh, he had 225 yards and five touchdowns. And I want to say Mike Davis – played excellent in replacing Christian McCaffrey. There's no, you know, full way of replacing Christian McCaffrey. I don't think there's any running back in the NFL that can do what Christian McCaffrey can do. Closest maybe Alvin Kamara, maybe Dalvin Cook, because he runs the rock really well, but he's a matchup nightmare 
when when he starts running routes. I honestly thought coming into the NFL, it might be uh, to his detriment to play running back. I thought at his best position might have been receiver, and, and I was wrong. But Christian McCaffrey, uh, pedigree. We talk about pedigree all the time. Pedigree. His dad is Ed McCaffrey. It, that <laughs> you can't run away from your DNA. Know that. Uh, coming up at number five, uh, highest paid Carolina Panthers. We got Matt Paradis, um, their center. He's getting paid ten point three million on the cap. Not bad at all. Had a PFF grade of sixty three point four. He played uh, one thousand twenty nine total sta- uh, snaps, one penalty, and he given up three stack, uh, sacks. So let's look at the tail of the tape for the Carolina Panthers. One thing that jumps off the screen when I really evaluate this team is that they had eight games where they lost by one possession. Hey, games, I'm telling you, this NFL, we're so quick as media, as analysts to say, oh, this team is sorry, this team is this, this team is that. But this game is a game of one possession. If you can win one possession games, you can be a good team. Atlanta, they lost a lot of one possession games this year. Kansas City Chiefs won a lot of one possession games this year. And everybody's so quick to say, oh, well, Kansas City don't look the same. This game is about being able to win these close Matchups, eight one possession losses. What if they won four of those? Nine to seven instead of five and eleven, with an opportunity to go to the playoffs. Five of those, ten to six, instead of five and eleven, with a great chance of going to the playoffs. What if they won six of those, they're in the playoffs. Absolutely, gotta win these one possession games. And Christian McCaffrey not playing that much this season really hurt. Uh, the Carolina Panthers. So let's let's look at the Taylor tape, and they also got some other issues, especially they got to shore up the offensive line and the secondary, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. So the tail of the tape for the Carolina Panthers, uh, overall ranked out of 32, of course. They were 24th. Um, their offense was 21st. Their defense was 22nd. Their record and their tail of the tape is dead on. They, they need to get better on both sides of the ball. Uh, but I think Christian McCaffrey, is he help, if he's healthy, that offense is being 21st, could easily jump up between that 11 and 14 range, easily with him playing. So coming up in this offseason, projected they'll have about $17 million in cap space, which you can do a little bit with, um, especially if you structure uh, contracts in the right format. Um, and they have $9.1 million in dead cap. And dead cap, we talk about dead cap almost every episode. I thought it was interesting that they had $9.1 million in dead cap and $7 million of which went to Luke Keekley, who didn't even play this year. We got to do better as organizations with these contracts. Dead, I hate that number. Anything over $5 million in dead cap, something went wrong. Especially when 90% of that money is going to one person. Something definitely went horribly wrong. So let's look at the uh, upcoming draft picks for the Carolina Panthers. Um, in the first round, they got pick six. Some mock drafts got them getting an offensive lineman. Some got them getting a quarterback. Stick with Teddy Bridgewater for one more year. Shore up your offensive line. Uh, the second round, they got the 39th pick. In the fourth round, they got the 104th pick. In the fifth round, they got the 135th pick. In the sixth round, they got the 169th pick. In the seventh round, they got the 195th pick for a total of one, two, three, four, five, six picks. So they have to be really careful with their picks. They have to be really smart with their picks. And I think they'll figure things out. So looking at the Carolina Panthers uh, free agency, they got some decisions to make, and they're not going to be able to keep everybody. We know how free agency works. Uh, Mike Davis is a unrestricted free agent he's 28 28 is a weird number for running back we know after a running back turns 30 it's it's almost like a grave for for, for running back so it'll be interesting to see what type of deal he gets wouldn't surprise me if he got like a two-year 15 16 million dollar deal and it probably won't be in carolina curtis samuel it's an interesting thing because a lot of teams looking for speed and curtis samuel definitely got that i also feel like Curtis Samuel isn't used right at times. Um, but I, could, I could just imagine somebody like uh, Eric Bieniemy slash Andy Reid had him in a way that they would use him, similar to how they use Miko Hartman and Tyreek Hill, because uh, he can carry the rock out of the backfield too. He actually did that a lot as a senior at Ohio State. He played running back quite often, and he was highly productive at it. But the market value for Curtis Samuel is around at four years, $49 million, which averages out to 
uh, 12.4 million per year and are the Panthers willing to pay that I don't believe they are uh, I, I just don't see that happening uh, especially with uh, DJ Moore and Roby Anderson I don't see them taking on a, a salary like that it just doesn't make sense uh, Russell Okun is also unrestricted free agent John Miller is an unrestricted free agent I'm just naming notables but the one they I think their top priority top priority has to be Taylor Moot, uh, Moten or Mouton I don't know how to say his last name my apologies but he had a PFF grade of 81.2 but his projected uh, marketed value is five years 73 million which averages out to be about 14.7 a year that has to be their top priority um he's young he's only 26 years old uh, they they gotta resign him and and i feel like he was one of the bright spots this year on you know a lot of people say uh, carolina is a bad team but they aren't a bad team he was definitely the uh, bright spot on a bad if you want to say bad team all right their 2021 schedule i was looking at it uh, they finished third. I don't know if everybody knows quite how the schedules are structured, but they finished third in the NFC South. So their uh, opponents are kind of guaranteed based on your place. So they will play, play the third team in the NFC East. They will play the third team in the NFC West. They will play the third team in the NFC North. So that's kind of how the, the schedules are made out. And, of course, they play one division in the AFC, and then they play their divisional opponents six times. So for their home games, they got the Atlanta Falcons, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the Saints. They also play Philly at home. They got the uh, Washington football team at home. They got the New England Patriots at home, the New York Jets at home, and also the Minnesota Vikings at home. Away, they have the uh, Atlanta Falcons. They had the Bucks. They had the Saints. Also have the Buffalo uh, Bills. They got to travel to Buffalo. They got the Dallas Cowboys. They got to go to at and Stadium. They play the Miami Dolphins. They play the Giants. And they play the Arizona Cardinals. So they're off season. The number one thing this team needs to do is get younger. The Carolina Panthers are the third oldest team in the NFL. That is scary. It's really scary. They have to get younger. That's the key for, for, for Matt Rule and this organization this year. Get younger. It's no reason this team should be the third oldest team in the NFL. No reason they should be the third oldest team. I think that's a statistic I look at, and it is scary whenever I see something like that. If you're in the top five oldest teams, get younger. Number one. Number uh, two, as far as team needs, the way they should attack the draft, the offensive line is the number one priority. Um, they do have some pieces, but they will be losing Russell Okung. I, I just don't foresee them signing him to a large contract. Taylor uh, Moten will definitely get paid this year. He's going to be looking at, like, like I said earlier, $14.7 million a year. Um, they got to show up their secondary as well. I think that will attack that via the draft. Uh, free agency gets tricky. A lot of times, the first thing we want to do is say free agency, free agency, free agency. We need to spend money. We need to do this. We need to do that. Free agency players are always overvalued. Their market value is higher than what it should be. So don't be so quick to jump on that free agency thing. Uh, also, they need to get quarterback insurance. Now, that, that don't mean take a quarterback in the first round. Don't even mean take a quarterback in the second round. But if you could take a quarterback in the fourth round with the 104th pick, kind of groom him, I, I think that's kind of the, the what they need to do. Those first team, uh, two picks need to be team needs. And I know some Carolina Panthers fans who disagree with me. Oh, no, we got to take a quarterback with a six pick. Get Teddy Bridgewater a healthy Christian McCaffrey uh, for most of the year and, and see how well he does. Uh, that, uh, so the first pick off is a line. That second pick needs to be secondary. Absolutely has to be uh, secondary, whether it's a corner. And I think I would uh, say corner is more important for the Carolina Panthers than safety. But they definitely need some secondary help. And then also... Uh, Maybe backup running back insurance because it looks like uh, Mike Davis is definitely going to test free agency. Somebody is going to pay him. The Buffalo Bills might need to pay him because they, they couldn't run a rock at all this past season. And you know about the Buffalo Bill and Carolina Panthers uh, connection. So I could definitely see Mike Mike Davis in a Buffalo Bills uniform. But he can he could also go to a, a number of, uh, of places. They also, they definitely need to get a backup running back in one of them spots. Um, like I said, I don't see them doing that via free agency, but maybe the draft, getting a, a backup running back. Uh, I expect this team to surprise some teams next year with with Drew Brees retiring. We don't know 
what Atlanta's going to do with Matt Ryan and Julio Jones. Uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, yes, they're in the Super Bowl. It'll be interesting to see how well they play in the Super Bowl today. I think they can win, but they had some games this season. They just did not look good at all. They just did not look good. Um, and, you know, the, the twice against the Saints and uh, against the Bears where Tom Brady didn't know that it was fourth down. They just had some games that they didn't. They didn't. It didn't look good. So the Carolina Panthers is going to have some opportunities next year. They have to take advantage of them. Losing eight games by one possession or less is unacceptable. It really is unacceptable. And you would say, okay, well, maybe that's a sign of a growing organization or the first-year head coach or injuries playing a part, Luke, Luke Keekly retiring. Uh but you have to win at least half of those one. You want half of those one possession, eight one possession games, you have at least a shot of going to the playoffs. And I know Carolina Pan- Panthers fans were just heartbreak after heartbreak this season. And it even started on week one. They lost in heartbreaking fashion. Um, so these are the things that the Carolina Panthers need to do to have a successful offseason. Number one, like as I said earlier, get younger. You have to get younger. Third oldest team in the NFL. There's no reason for that. Some of these old players, they got to go. My apologies. <laughs> Number two, offensive line. Starts with Taylor uh, Moten. Also, uh, maybe getting a couple of offensive linemen in a, in a draft. Three, trust Teddy Bridgewater. Give him another y- year. I mean, you don't want to take the, the, the cap penalty for cutting him this year. That would That would be stupid. That would definitely be absent-minded. So we got to make sure that Teddy uh, Bridgewater is trusted as the guy. I'm not saying don't get insurance. Definitely get a backup quarterback in the draft, but don't cut him. Try after quarterback with that first pick, then it's like you're starting over again. We know what the NFL stands for. It stands for not for long. That's what NFL stands for. So make sure that you are sure when you make uh you know, picks like these. So, and then lastly, uh, we said get younger, offensive line, backup quarterback, get a backup running back. This is Leverett Analytics. I'm your host, Leverett KT. I want to shout out to everybody who's tuning in to the first ever video broadcast of Leverett Analytics. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, as I always like to say, keep it analytical. Peace.